Mexico, world famous for its food, culture, we've heard the scary stories, too. There's literally a Mexican ho ho holiday called Day of the Dead. We all know the stories. I've seen many I've seen many of you saying you're from there or asking to share more. So I'm going to be generous and do it again. My name is Jade, and I'm, we're going to go for a tough and scary urban legend. Part 2. Number 10. La Llorona. Once upon a time, there was a Mexican village. There was a beaut there was a beautiful woman called Maria. She was poor. She was known for a beaut. A rich noble man was traveling through her village to stop. He striked when he saw Maria. He was so charmed by her beauty. He proposed to her immediately. She accepted the wedding was planned. Even, even though the father was testifying, he was marrying into poverty. Maria and her husband built a new house. She gave birth to two twin boys. She always traveled. Returned. One day, he never came home. A while later, as Maria and boy were walking by, she saw the familiar carriage with a younger, beautiful woman next to her husband. Maria flew jealous rage. She was so angry, seeing, seeing her husband, she picked up her two boys and flung them into the river. By the time she came around, they were floating in the river face down. She then jumped in, hoping that they they see her sold to the, to the land, unable to pass on to the afterlife due to the grief and murder of her two boys. This if you hear her cries, misfortune, death is upon you. If you're a child, be extra careful. She's a, she loves children. They're hers. She may drown you. And that they too want to meet the same person. Number nine. El Sombrero. In some parts of Mexico, this, this mysterious, mysterious, mysterious thing, it translates to the goblin. He, in English, he wears a huge dark hat and dresses in, entirely in black and, and boots and belt. He preys on the young and even on women. And as he has an obsession with braiding hair and manes and tails of horses. He braids the hair as of dogs. People see the animals are dogs. They know the goblin. He's a boy when you can't find them. He has a large heart and long hair. He rubs in ten a pack of mules. When he finds a woman he likes, he ties her up. He ties up he ties them up. And he's said to serve them dirt for dinner, which make them unable to sleep. The legend goes and a, a woman named Susanna was she was she was approached and serenaded by the goblin with the big hat. Her parry words were so late. So they forced her to come inside. The goblin returned every night, making it impossible for her to sleep. He tried to feed her. She'd find dirt in her food. Her parents cut the girl's hair, had it blessed by a priest. It had he moved on to serve moved on to his next week. He continued his journey today. Number eight. The vanishing hitchhiker. This is an old story burned into the memory of many Mexicans. A taxi driver called Pedro Ramirez was heading for the town of Ramirez and had a quick snack of coal on a dock. A coal stopped her to ask for help and people wanted to harm her, so they sped away from the area together. She said her name was Martha and her parents were the owner of the ranch, where he had picked her up. He took her to Cazona's and left her at the house she wanted to. Martha was very grateful and invited him to spend the day with her. Her parents. She returned a few days later. He knocked on the door. An elderly came. He asked Martha and explained how they met. She smiled. Then Martha was her daughter, which had been assassinated ten years prior by drug dealers outside of her husband's ranch. This was the first time Martha goes and does it. And Pedro didn't quite, you know. Believe her, she invited him in. Them in the living room was a very old font of Martha that looked like she had been the other night. Many people get creeped up by this story, but like what did who this young lady is. Number seven, the Santa Paula Cemetery. This is a very haunted cemetery. This dates back to 1882 and goes like this. One night, a young couple put their nine-year-old son in his bed. The, Cheeto slept with the light on, 
as he was very afraid of the dark. He had two torches outside of the bedroom and with the windows open. This night, a storm hit and blew out the torches. His mother entered the room. It was icy cold. She rushed and found him dead. He had died from a heart attack due to his pathological fear of the dark, and the torches went out. A rumor spread that it exploded inside his chest, and it was a curse. And he later rushed to cemetery with his death did not end quickly. His coffin was found lying on the ground next to his grave. The parents locals were shocked. The same thing happened. They continued like this nine straight days. His parents began. The boy was so afraid of the dark. He didn't want to be kept in the ground away from the light. Even in death. So they created a stone cone on pillar above the ground so his tomb could see sunlight. Since then, people are hearing, seeing a boy that matches the description. Wondering why tonight. Others have seen this. Mystery balloons all above the gravestone. Carried by a small child. People even visit this grave and want to see the signs of him at night. But his sightings can judge as number six. The Cadejo. This is from southern Mexico folklore. The white and black Cadea. They are dog like creatures, a good company home later. The black Cadea is fear, as an evil spirit. It does the opposite and it tries to kill people. But the person who. because they're an idiot, apparently. The person saved from the attack by the white Cadea home until a good Cadea wins. It's a sight behold while they dog like creatures. They're much like bigger than a dog. Some of which can be big as cows, burning red eyes, and goat shoes. They lurk in grave years and dark out waiting for the next victim to pass by. With smell of, and they smell like urine and, and sulfur. And they move in a demonic danger, shirt jerky movements. Is that its gaze can freeze you in place. We easily attack. Number five. La Mala Hula. This means the evil, the evil one. This being in, in parts of Mexico has a wicked spirit, demon, or country roads, waiting to attack anyone who walks alone. Crossroads, mostly. The people who have seen it, they fear it. They fear it more than the devil itself. A lump swirling through the night air and changing shapes. And changing at will. A ghost a ghostly black shroud. Nobody wants to see that. It will drive a person to insanity. It will try to hypnotize and paralyze people before attacking them. It rushes forward as a thick black smog in both moon next morning death. At number four, the Princess of Bufa. An area of forested hills and rocky cliffs in the southeast side of Corajato. An enchanted princess lives, and on holy Thursdays for centuries, she will emerge from the mountaintop to call out for a handsome, valiant man, carrying down to the altar and nearby town. Once there, every shall be human again, and the town will be restored to her as a booming mining town. However, with many similar stories, it's always a catch. The man who rescues the prince must not be so stunned by her view that he cannot complete the journey. He must carry it calmly all the way, or can learn or lose his step. Hearing strange noise behind him. If he does turn around, the well, princess will. She will, a vicious, hideous serpent, and will devour him whole. This happens every year because the town not met its former glory. As the prince of. Number three, the mannequin. In a store window in the city in Chihuahua, this has become famous. It's been there since 1930, and it's been, it doesn't look so creepy wait till you hear this. Soon after, locals note the mannequin an, an uncanny resemblance to the daughter of who in the store, uh, Guada Esperada, and she bombed Bali, who died who died on her wedding day. After being being widowed, being bit by a black rose, the mother denied all of this and took all of this. It was the body of her daughter. 
were just too perfect. Sonia Pusiaga was bad of it. She had to change the outfit twice a week and was quoted just to, every, every time I go near her, with my hands break in a sweat. Her hands are very realistic and she even has varicose veins on her legs. She's a real person. I feel like until I saw her the close up of her hands, now, now I'm not so sure. I'm never going near that statue. Number two. The Island of Dolls. You can island there's an island that attracts a text is covered in creepy dolls of every shape and size. There's a famous story of why there was a girl found drowned in mysterious circumstances many years ago up the island. It was called Da Huya Satan. He saw a floating doll girl but he hung it to a tree as a sign of respect and to help her into the next life. Don Julian lies that of this beautiful girl. Then he realized it was done far too late. He believed the doll was possessed by the spirits of the dead girls from all over the world. His friend said he went mad, driven by an unlikely spirit when he started. After 50 years of doll hanging, he was found dead, drowned in the same area where the girl was. And he's joined the others on the island. People visit there, honor him, the girl, and the spirits of the others. However, people don't stay too long, and almost, and no one will spend on the island of dolls. Number one, the seventh son. This is an area near Toledo. In 1960, there was a boy who lived in the village. His his name was Federico. He was the seventh son in his family. His father was the seventh seventh son in his because of this. He was endowed with dark oracle powers. He had second sight and, to, and the ability to see the future. He went healing of their ailment with the touch of his hand. He kind, quiet, and shy. The other kids hated him because they feared him. They wanted nothing to do with him. So they held a meeting what to do with him. They voted to kill him and then destroy his body. That was the only way that to keep you safe, he channeled. And when a shack where his back was turned, they pounced on him, and bound him up in a satanic ritual. They hung him from a, a and, and put him in boiling. He, he was still alive and screaming in pain. The gouged out his eyes, hacked his, his body to pits, and dumped him into the river. The next day, some villagers said, one of the other, one of, the, one of the elders got no reply. They entered. They stopped. There was the elder, dead on the floor. His eyeballs went to chest. His head been crushed beyond all recognition. His eyes, feet, his eye, his feet were chopped off in his hands. There was men written his blood, saying, "An innocent blood has been spilled. Now the guilty must die." All the re uh, elders who were one by one, their bodies always found in hideous ways of murder. There was another way of it. Now I have been now I've been avenged. The guilty have killed their deaths. Whew. Let's take a moment there. That was a very gory note to leave off in on this video. I'm so sorry. Are you are you more into ghosts or whatever? So tell me what you want to do next. It's okay if you say all of it. What country should we do next? I'm thinking more South American countries. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Jay. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, that was very intense. Holy mother of God. And I thought Nightfall was going to come join. Whew. Sorry, bud. Should have been here sooner. But we're all good.